watchers, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I have a debut piece, yet another debut piece uh, from this company, Alto 8, uh, and it comes packaged in, I, I have to say, a fairly attractive packaging here. You know, it kind of reminds me uh, of the Sega design, which I uh, just recently did. Uh, they are coming out to say that uh, they're here to provide uh, watches with different looks and design approaches. And, uh, you know, I think they kind of achieved some of that here. But uh, let's flip the camera around now and uh, take a closer look at what's in here. All right, guys. So here we have the piece on the table here. It comes in this, uh, you know, verdant green, uh, I want to say, uh, you know, with a bit of a gold leaf there. You know, the name of the you know the brand or the series on the spine of the book. Um, I don't know if they actually match it uh, with all the watches. This watch is green, but I'll be surprised if they actually match it. How does it spin? Actually, you know these aren't really the best, but this one's actually pretty good. I reckon it's at least a two and a half, if not a three, uh, on the mark there. Okay, so let's just get this uh, open, put that aside. So. Actually, very much reminiscent of Sega design, I have to say, the way they, they've gone about the packaging here. Look at that. Isn't that pretty, pretty funky? I quite like that. Uh, and there's a little bit of blurb about the company. Let me know, you know, what you think. You know, a lot of these tend to be a little bit tacky, uh, a little bit corny. This one is probably a bit middling, but let me know what your thoughts are, uh, you know, in terms of the company blurb and story there. All right. So... Uh, it comes in two sets of straps, uh, with two sets of straps. This one's, of course, the one that it's kind of meant to go with. That one's just a black uh, leather with crocodile pattern, as you've seen so many times before. So I'm not really going to uh, talk about that anymore. And then, of course, the body of the watch is uh, in the middle uh, of the case here. All right, so let's just put it together. Uh, let you guys see how this works. So, you know, of course, quick release and you just find a hole and then you can insert it and there we go so you know again doing this behind the camera obviously isn't the most efficient but just to show you how easy these can be you know imagine it without any obstruction you guys should be able to do it very very easily all right so let's just put that aside and show you guys the watch in closer detail here so guys this is the auto 8 Infinity Automatic, right? Infinity is the name of the model, but actually it kind of takes the uh, company logo as well. So I wonder if they will run out of names, you know, what, it, what they're going to name their second model because this one's named Infinity. So this one is on Kickstarter as we speak. I'm going to try to release this while it is still live. The very early bird price is uh, HKD 2400, which equates to about USD $310. Most people probably can't get that tier. You probably get the next tier up or so, which is around USD 350. But, you know, check out the Kickstarter links down below for more details. Now, this is uh, the gun green is the colorway that they've uh, named this one. Uh, it does come in a number of other colorways, including plain steel as well as bronze. Uh, of course, the bronze models will be somewhat more expensive on the Kickstarter price as well as the normal MSRP. All right. So first up, as I usually like to do, let's talk about the movements. So in here uh, is unfortunately, I want to say a, a Miyota 8 series, right? It's the 8215. I'm pretty sure it is, but it is, of course, heavily modified because of, you know, you've seen how the display works and we'll talk about that uh, in a little while. So all the specs down the left hand of the screen here, it does also have a ghost date position. So that's a little bit unfortunate. I mean, there is no uh, no date movement in the 8 series, I believe. So you're going to have to just put up with a ghost date if you're going to choose this movement. Rated accuracy, as you can see down the bottom left there. In this case, performance is all right. Uh, it's running at plus 14 seconds per day in the week that I've had this running. Okay, let's just uh, show you uh, the front of the dial now. So I, I mentioned it is actually a modified movement. And yes, uh, I'll just try to put some uh, shots uh, on the right of screen here of uh, you know just a very brief uh, screenshot that they've shown about how they modify it uh, obviously there is going to be some sort of gear mechanism on top of the usual Miyota to cause this to run I'll just show you so 
And to see if as that minute hand goes off the right edge, uh, you know, the second hand comes up there and then there's a third hand. So the minute hand and the hour hand, so that fat triangle is the hour hand. As you can see, it goes past the 12, another hour hand comes up. So three hour hands, three minute hands, you know, in a triplicate around uh, the central stem there. They've had to modify it. So this, you know, goes around, uh, I guess, 12 hours across 120 degrees, as opposed to usually 12 hours per 360 degrees. So they're, you know, kind of like slowing it down so that the 12 hours goes across that 120 degree arc is what they've done to give us that, you know, kind of, kind of cool display, you know, it's, it's very different. It's, it's like nothing that I've ever seen, probably nothing like you've ever seen, I imagine. All right, so let's talk about the case. Here. The case here is 45 millimeter diameter. So it's very sizable, you know, it's not a small case by any means. Uh, it's gunmetal, I, I think, you know, they call this gun green. So I think this is supposed to be gunmetal. Certainly, I think the lighter bits on the dial, you can consider gunmetal. This case is almost black. A very dark grey uh, PVD treatment of the 316L steel. Uh, thickness overall is 15 millimeters, uh, and the lugs, which are hidden underneath, as you saw, are 22 millimeters. Of course, for this case size, it's got to be 22, I reckon. Uh, and then the round case means there is no lug-to-lug -lug distance. It is actually also 45 millimeters between my index fingers here. Okay, so perfectly round in dimensions there. Overall weight on leather is 104 grams so not too heavy you know there's there's a bit of heft to it but you know it's comfortable enough that it's not a heavy weight 104 grams right let's talk about the finishing so circular brushing you can see straight away at the top uh, so if you look from the side it becomes you know i guess you would call that horizontal brushing so top surface bottom surface kind of circular slash horizontal definitely circular brushing on the case back the, the steel on the case back there uh, but that side there where it's divided into three facets or three surfaces, that horizontal facet there is polished. Okay, so nicely done, fairly nicely done there, I want to say, you know, and that how, how cool is that case? It kind of reminds you of, reminds me of a UFO if I hold it like that, actually, the shape, you know, round, curvy, kind of like almost uh, extraterrestrial. Okay, so the, the, the finishing is just that really, there's nothing much more to talk about. That is, of course, a display case bag with a customized rotor. And that one, I think you can call it gunmetal. Screw secured, right? Four screws there. It's not a screw down case back. And that is not a, not a screw down crown. It winds, right? The movement in the zero position. And then you pull it out for the ghost state, pull it out to the second position uh, for the adjustment. Okay, so it's a push crown. The water resistant rating they've gone for here is 50 meters, right? So they've not gone for kind of swim, of course, you're not going to do that with a leather strap anyway, or at least I wouldn't, not this type of leather strap. So it's not designed for that. It is really uh, just a 50 meter for splashing, maybe rain, you know, but that's about it that you should really be using this watch for. Now, talking about the dial, right, where a lot of the interest is. So this is, you know, as you see there, you know, multi-layered, you can see it's three-dimensional, multi-layered uh, dial that is inspired by race car dashboards. This is really what they've uh, you know, said in their promotional materials. Uh, there is a mix of finishes between brush, right, both straight brush, circular brush, as well as matte finishing for some of those metal surfaces. And uh, you know that, that fresh green where the numbers are, that, that has a bit of a sunburst to it. Okay, so it's um, you know, fairly nicely done. There's a number of different finishes and that green is pretty cool. And for my money, I reckon this is the prettiest colorway that they've got, they've got going. That's just my subjective preference here. Okay, so that, that 120 degree arc at the top, that's uh, you know the time display, the hours are of course across 120 degrees. So each hour is 10 degrees rather than the usual 30 degrees on the full dial that you normally see. And the font as well that they've used, that they tell us that it's a unique custom font uh, where they've gone for a lot of a curvy design, which evokes the curviness of the rest of the case here. Right, the hands, right, they're, they're triple main hands as I described. So the, the big triangle, you know, near the middle is the hour. The thinner hand near the periphery is the minute. And then the seconds, as you can see there in the middle, is actually on a little bit of a disc. 
right, that rotates and there's a seconds marker around the periphery on a, you know, on a donut, I suppose you want to call that. Uh, in terms of loom, it's actually blue superluminova. They tell us it's superluminova, so I assume this is BGW9. Uh, they're on the hands, of course, as well as the second hand uh, disc or second disc, I should say, as well as all the numerals on the dial. So you're going to be able to read the time. I guess reasonably uh, easily in the dark or at least as easily as you would uh, you know in the daytime uh, the display is pretty good it doesn't last brightly all the way through the night but I did find that I still could read uh, the time when having this watch uh, after a night in bed all right so that's the description of the dial uh, above the dial is a fairly nicely domed, look at the distortion there, that's pretty cool. Fairly nicely domed sapphire crystal actually. I quite like uh, the way they've done the crystal in this particular case. And then now moving on to the band, you've seen the band, it's or, or a strap, it's green stitched leather, right? Genuine leather. Just let you see that. Nothing too special. They've given uh, the quick release bars, which is a nice touch. And then it's got this uh, PVD treated you know, brush PVD treated buckle, right? That's, that's what you're getting here. All right, so that's it. That's the description of the watch. Let's try it on the wrist for a wrist shot now. And there you go, guys, the Auto 8 Infinity Automatic on my 17 centimeter wrist. So remember, 45 millimeter perfectly round case means that, you know, it still wears okay because the straps can just fall down, but look at the size of it. It's definitely a large watch for me. Right, uh, and, and definitely this would be a casual watch. This would not be formal by any means. I wouldn't generally choose to use this with a shirt and tie. It's just too large and it's definitely you know, not a formal uh, dress piece at all. It is more a fun piece and, and that's really what uh, I think I would use it for. Okay, so that's uh, the description. What are the things that I've enjoyed about this watch? You know, I, I reckon, look, it, it is actually another rather fascinating debut piece. It is actually quite an interesting design concept. It's like nothing I've seen before. Uh, I like the, the idea and the modification that they've done uh, with that movement. It obviously would have cost you know, a significant amount to put in the R&D to develop that. Uh, the design of the case is pretty cool. I quite like that. You know, the, the, the theme of the roundness and curves, they certainly achieve a lot of uh, uh, I guess what they say it's meant to be, you know, in terms of a curvy round case without any, you know, sharp angles, at least not on the outside. Uh, and it's, it's got a very retro type of feel, the font, you know, that UFO type of look, as I said, and definitely a great conversation starter. I've had people certainly look at this and go, you know, what is that? That is pretty cool looking. It's interesting. It's different. Tell us about it. You know, it definitely has been fun showing people how this works. Uh, relatively well put together, I have to say, you know, the, the overall quality, finishing, solidity of the piece, reasonably well put together. Uh, I think the design elements, particularly the dial, uh, the, the lugless design, the hidden lugs, you know, very nicely done. I quite like those elements of this particular watch. What are the bits of concern? What, what are the negatives, I feel? Well, look, I, I think uh, if you look at the time, it definitely takes some time to get used to using this. It's not a quick one. It's more like a kind of like a seven Friday, I want to say. Uh, you almost have to have some practice to tell the time. And after a while, you realize you don't really need to look at the hour. You kind of know the hour most of the time. So most of the time, you're just looking at the minute to tell how much past the hour you are. So that's, that's really how it uh, has worked for me. Definitely a large size, but as I said, it's compensated by the hidden lugs. So uh, even with a relatively small wrist like mine, it kind of sits okay, you know, thanks to that design. But not everybody will want a 45 millimeter watch on their wrist. Uh, and in terms of the movements, you know, I think uh, unfortunately, you know, because uh, it's considerable amount would have gone into R and D, they had to step back on the movement. So. They really, I, I preferred if they really at least try to use the 821A with the decoration. This is actually eBosch, right, plain. So it looks a little bit underdone. So, or, 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 you know, even step up to the next thing, like maybe a Seiko NH35A or something better. Unfortunately, we're just left with the eBosch 8215, I reckon what this is. And then, you know, leather, yeah, it's comfortable, but uh, I think for watches like this, I really would prefer an uh, option of a silicon rubber. There's, there's none of your watches come in that. Uh, I think that would be a very welcome alternative that most people would like. 
All right, so there you go, guys. That's my thoughts on this watch. Let's flip the camera around now for the wrap up. So there you go, guys, my review of the Auto 8 Infinity. Another rather interesting debut piece, I have to say. I think there's uh, a lot of points of interest and, uh, you know, certainly things to like about this watch. It, it definitely garners attention as a debut uh, and they've really taken quite a different approach, which I like. Uh, at the early bird price, uh, I reckon it's pretty reasonable, you know, for the design work that has gone into the watch. Uh, yet, I, I feel that some people will still feel that, uh, you know, around the 350 USD mark might be a little steep for what this watch offers. Certainly at the full MSRP, I don't expect them to be selling much. So, you know, anticipate that this will usually uh, be acquired for some degree of discount. But look, let me know your thoughts, what you think about Auto 8 and the approach and design uh, that they've taken. You know, will they succeed or are they going to be just another micro brand uh, that kind of starts up and then maybe doesn't go too far? Really like to hear what you think in the comments below. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.